Astrophotography is a tricky art style, and if you hear anybody try to tell you that astrophotography data processing is easy, it's not. There is really nothing easy about taking photons from millions or billions of miles away on your computer, stretching it out to turn it into your own art style. There's nothing easy about that. But there are ways to make it slightly more simple, and we're going to go through that today. We're going to be checking out a program called Pixinsight, and we're going to see how to do some data processing, what are some of the basic steps, and what you need to do to get an image like I just did on this one, the Elephant Nebula. When you first get your file stacked, you might wonder why your image looks like this instead of something you would see coming out of a Hubble Magazine telescope. And the reason for that is that it's just not stretched yet. You didn't do anything wrong, it's just the first step you have to take. So in order to get started, you're going to need to drag and drop your file onto Pixinsight. I've already done that. It's just you don't even have to open Pixinsight first. You just drag the file on your desktop to the Pixinsight icon and it'll automatically open it up. Then if you already have a workspace, you can go ahead and drag and drop that as well. You don't necessarily need it, but it is kind of handy if you don't want to have to be going back and forth. Um, but the first step that we're going to take here in the Pixinsight program is an auto stretch. And to do that, you're going to go over to this left side where it says process control. You're going to type in screen. You're going to type in screen transfer function and you're going to double click on that. You're going to unlink the image right there and you're going to auto stretch. So here for an example is my auto stretched image. It really doesn't look like much yet. Uh, but we're going to get a lot of nice coloration and detail in here very, very soon. Now, if you see some weird edging on your image, feel free to use this next thing. It's called the dynamic crop, just to get rid of any of those uh, edges or perhaps some stacking errors. Type that in, dynamic crop. Double click on that. Now, to do the dynamic crop, it's pretty simple. You just go ahead and drag the field of view that you want in here just like that drop it and then if you want to you can adjust it uh, just by dragging the sides as so or you can rotate it like that but of course i don't want it to be rotated so i'm just going to set it back to the way it was and if you want to save it all you do is press this little check button and then your image will be successfully cropped as you can see it appears that i over cropped it but that's okay we're not going to do anything with that yet the next step that you're going to want to take is doing a color calibration. And to do that, you're going to want to open the image solver because it doesn't automatically have the data that it needs in the program to know exactly what it's looking at. So go ahead and type that in image solver and open that up. Now there's a couple things you need to pay attention to here. You want to make sure that the coordinates are correct. And if you took your light frames, uh, on a computer or perhaps with the ZWO ASI Air, it should automatically have the location of this deep sky object saved in here. Uh, but if it doesn't, you can always just go to the search bar and type it in yourself. And you want to make sure that the date and time were somewhat correct. Then another important thing, you want to make sure your focal distance is accurate with the telescope's focal length. And the pixel size has to be the correct pixel size for your camera. Otherwise, it will not be able to play self correctly. Of course, mine is 3.76 since I'm using the ASI 533MC Pro. And all you have to do is hit OK and allow it to register the stars and figure out exactly what it's looking at. Now, once it's done, you're going to see all these little coordinates here. You really don't have to pay attention to that. You just go ahead and move on to your next step. Now, the next step that we're going to do here is, again, go to Process Explorer. And we're going to type in photo. It's like this, P-H-O-T-O. And you're going to click on photometric color calibration. Just go ahead and double click on that. And you really don't have to change anything in here. Just go ahead and press the square. And it will automatically calibrate the coloration in your image. Once it's done, you're going to see this little chart pop up. You really don't have to do anything with that. You can kind of just minimize it. And then you can close out of the photometric color calibration. Now, just go ahead and auto stretch it again. Just to fix the coloration that you see here. And then you can go ahead and get rid of that auto stretch by pressing this X button at the top right corner. Uh, and that's necessary for this next step that we're going to take. Now, before we do any more stretching, because we don't want to blow the stars, we're going to want to get rid of the stars. So for that, obviously, you want to make sure you have Starnet installed. Starnet has a tutorial on how to install that. 
uh, install this program into Pixel Site. If you go on their website, it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. So this is assuming that you already do have that installed. Uh, the next thing, of course, that you need to do is type that in, Starnet. S-T-A-R is Starnet 2. You double click on that. We want to create the star mask. Make sure it's set as linear data and we're going to press the square here uh, and allow it to get rid of the stars before we do any further editing. Okay, now three hours later, it's finally done. No, it didn't take three hours, but it definitely felt like it. Anyways, the next step that you have to take once you have the stars uh, all nice and pretty here, I would say I can go ahead and uh, get rid of that auto stretch, and you want to minimize this. Make sure you don't close this. You're going to need this in order to bring the stars back in later on. And now it's time to actually stretch this image. To stretch it, um, you, if you have this program already installed, Easy Processing Suite, obviously it makes things more simple. You just go ahead and go to Easy Soft Stretch. And it would automatically do it for you. Of course, you just go ahead and adjust this little histogram uh, to change the brightness, contrast, everything. Sometimes people have a hard time trying to figure out where that is to even install it on the internet. It's something you have to download. So we're just going to use another uh, another form of stretching, and that is the arc sign stretch. So if we look that up, go to Process Explorer, type in AR, you'll see it right there at the very top. Arc sign stretch, you want to double click that and open it up. Next, you want to open up this preview just like this. Press a little circle. Now, sometimes this preview is going to start off looking like this, and you just want to start bumping up this black point. Uh, to bring that in if you go too far like this you'll see it goes completely white and that's because all values were clipped to zero um, you'll see this little box here says highlight values clipped to zero that's checked it's actually a very good thing that you want to keep on it'll protect your image from getting overly grainy uh, so you just want to kind of bump up this black point as much as possible and then hit the square and then just continue doing this until you're actually able to see some of the detail that you want to see on this image. As you see, that's too far. So I'm going to lower this back down. And there we go. I'm going to hit the square again. And now I'm going to close out of arcs and stretch. So now it is stretched. Uh, but obviously I want more of that red coloration to pop. So the next thing we have to do is go to the Curves Transformation. And you want to double click on that. And again, we're going to make a preview, just like so. After we make the preview, you're going to go click on this little S here. And you're just going to bump this up. Now obviously that kind of saturates everything. And if you're happy with how it's saturated, just go ahead and press the square here. If you want to bring out certain color channels, then you can always just reset it by pressing this bottom right corner. You just go ahead and bump that channel up, just like so. As you can see, now the red channel is much more prominent, which is something you definitely want to see in a nebula like this, since after all, it is mostly hydrogen alpha data that we're processing here. And once you're happy with it, again, press apply. Now I'm going to reset it one more time, and I'm going to bring some blue in here. And as I mentioned, it's all to one's liking. So maybe you didn't image this specific thing. Maybe you imaged a galaxy and there's certain colors that you want to bring out. Just go ahead and play around with those color channels in there. Uh, play around with the saturation until you're happy. It's a lot of trial and error that you're going to need to do there. And then sometimes as you're doing your processing, you might notice a gradient. This is something that you're going to want to do in the very beginning. You're going to go to Process Explorer and just type in Gradient Correction. It'll be right here. Again, open that and press the square. You really don't have to change anything on that as well. And it'll kind of just even out your picture. So if there's any weird lighting on one side and then dark on the other, if you use this Gradient Correction, it'll kind of just even all that light out. It's a really nice tool that uh, Pixelsight has added in. And once you're happy with how this is looking, then you can always do uh, noise reduction. It's not really necessary, but if it if you have too much noise, just go ahead and type in noise, TGB denoise, and 
uh, you just go ahead and press this little square here. Generally, you want to do the denoise before you do any stretching, though. So if you've already done that, you just go ahead and go back uh, and do the denoise. And then you can come in to stretch it later on. I'm going to cancel this. Because I don't want to denoise. Now, the next thing that you have to do is fix your stars up a little bit. Obviously, you don't want the stars to look like that when you put them back in the picture. So again, you're going to go to the arcs and stretch. Open that on up. And you're going to bring the stars up a little bit. Lower this black point back down to zero. And then start bringing the stars up. Of course, open the preview. I forgot about that. Bring the stars up. Kind of just to your liking. Obviously, you don't want to overdo it. This looks good for me. I'm going to press a square. Now, we're going to do something that you might get bothered by. A lot of people don't like the idea of math. And I know that when I first started using Pixinsight, I was kind of put off at the idea of using this setting. It's called Pixel Math. That just sounded really complicated, but it's not that complicated. Just, just, just bear with me. You go to Process Explorer. You type in Pixel Math. And we're going to use this to combine the starless picture with the stars. And to do that... You go to Expression Editor, you want to type in the, the starless, which is just listed as elephant right now. And then you want to press plus because we're adding them together. And you want to click on star mask. I accidentally typed an elephant again. We'll try star mask. Double click it. You hit OK here. That's all the math you have to do. Next, you drop down the destination part. Create new image and hit the square and then boom there is your image finished beautiful stars recombined background image stretched not a lot of noise it's a really simple process to do uh, when using Pixinsight. obviously there's a lot more complicated stuff that you can do with Pixinsight, but if you're like me and you were just getting started you're not going to want to do all that you'll be pretty happy with how your image is looking here so those are some of the basic steps that you can use for Pixinsight processing. You can use it on nebulas, on galaxies, dark nebula, pretty much everything. Hopefully you found this video helpful if you were starting off as a beginner. If you did, please make sure you leave a like and drop a comment down below if you have any tips or advice. And as always, I wish you all clear skies. Thank you for watching the channel.